your, your personal story, how you came into dance? When well, I started studying dance from the age of six, and uh, my initial exposure to dance was basically through my mother, who used to dance at home, if not for any public uh, performances, so she was interested. And, and then we moved to Jamshedpur, where my father got transferred uh, from Calcutta. And that's when they saw there was a talent in me, and they decided to send me to the local dance school, which was teaching Kathak. And uh, the guru was Guru Pralhad Das from Calcutta. So I studied Kathak with him uh, over a period of 10 years. And I used to perform uh, in the dance dramas he would create. And so that was my sort of initial training of Kathak. And the, your, yeah. parents, your parents supported you? Yes, yes. I'm, my, I was very blessed uh, to have parents who supported me in whatever I did. Uh, even the fact that when they wanted me to study, come to Bombay and I went to university, so at that point of time they did not permit me to study dance, but they did not at the same time have any objections that I continued to practice uh, whatever I had of katha in my young growing up days. And the fact that when I saw an American dance company, the Murray Lewis Dance Company, which came to India, and that was the first time I saw an American modern dance company perform. And so your, your went, initial training uh, in Kathak, that was in uh, 1950s uh, or something, yeah, yeah 1950s. Uh -huh. yeah. And uh, it started from 1952 onwards until I finished school and uh, so I saw the American Modern Dance Company so I was interested in exploring a completely new different form of dance and movement and in those days there were no videos and there was no TV so, uh, and subsequently it so happened that uh, Uttara Asha Kurlawala, who was studying at the Martha Graham School in New York, uh, happened to come to India and she was looking for some dancers to do a small little creation of her work. So I got involved in that. And then after having performed and I spoke to her and she helped me get the admission to go to study at the Martha Graham School in New York. So, uh, but did you do also some other professional, bachelor, bachelor of something? Or did I, you I completed my degree. I, I'm a bachelor of commerce and economics, commerce and economics. From, from Bombay University. From University. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I decided to leave. Uh, again, I asked my parents that I, after uh, I graduated that I still wanted to pursue dance. So they said fine and the way I left the country was I left with a backpack and I sailed out in a cargo boat uh, with goats and sheep and came to Iran, Khuramshah. And then from Khuramshah I hitchhiked all the way up to Calais in the French port and then I took the ferry and came to Dover and from Dover I again hitched up to London and I started studying the Martha Graham, at the Martha Graham school uh, which was called the place where they were teaching the Martha Graham technique while I was waiting to get my US visa because I had not taken my US visa before I left India. So I never got the US visa at that point of time and, uh, and subsequently I started studying 
the Martin Graham technique. Uh, but as I had no scholarship or anything, so studying was... Uh, Independently. Or, yeah. So it was an exchange of, I teach some Kathak and I take some classes. So that's how it Since began. Since 1968 or something? No, 69. 69. Mm -hmm. 69. Mm -hmm. So you will stay with Martha Graham? Well, I, I just studied very briefly. I'm not a Martha Graham uh, trained dancer. I mean, uh, you know, people uh, said... Uh, so I, and then I felt I, that the Martha Graham dance technique was not meant for me. It wasn't really conducive for my body. You know, I spent three months uh, studying it. And, mm -hmm. and then also circumstances of surviving and this whole tension of not whether I will get the visa finally or not. So eventually I knew I wasn't going to get the visa. And um, then I decided to travel the world with, with the object of observing dance, observing, experiencing. So for eight years I traveled uh, to 32 countries. In Europe? No. no? I, after I finished Europe, I from Canada and to Japan, Korea, Hong Kong, you know, Australia, New Zealand, South America. So you, all on all the five continents I traveled. And then I returned to India. But and how you how you came to Pinabosh? How how Pina how you Bosch met? Was much later. She much came later. Mm -hmm. Pinabosh. Uh, when I returned to India, I was studying Kathakali. In Kerala itself. No, in Bombay and Kerala. Uh -huh. And she happened to be here in Bombay, and uh, I was asked by the director of the Goethe Institute uh, to show some what I had was studying. So that's when she saw me dance and she asked me if I would be interested in coming to Wuppertal, you know, and spending time. So that's how that little journey with Pina Bausch was there, and that was in 1980, 81. Mm -hmm. And what about Kathakali? Who was your teacher, and how did My you Kathakali keep Kathakali? Was Krishna Panikkar, and uh, he was based in Mumbai. But he also lived in Kerala part of the year during the summertime. And I was introduced to him by a dance critic who felt that uh, if I studied Kathakali, it would enhance uh, my dance vocabulary and it would help me because the way he was seeing me perform my contemporary creations, he felt that by studying Kathakali, which was a very good advice, uh, would add another dimension uh, to my work. Mm -hmm. So that's how I studied Kathakali over a period of six years. Not sort of regularly. For three years it was very regular. The other three was sort of on and off because at that time I was returning back to Europe to perform and come back. So, so that time classes were not so consistent as they were in the earlier first three years when I started studying with him. So that's how I came about with Kathakali. How can you describe your own style? How did you start it? How did you understood that uh, you have to create something totally different from traditional things or using traditional things but still your own? So what was, your, what was the beginning of um, your vision in dance? Well, see, I've basically been uh, Things have come very gradually. When I wanted to dance, I studied dance. I was allowed to dance. I, I wanted to go overseas. Uh, I was given the permission. I experienced it. And then I started sort of creating my own works as a solo performer. And then again, uh, it took me one year or two find a platform to present my solo work. And then, this we are talking about 1978. And, uh, you know, the word contemporary or modern was totally alien in the country. There was uh, not many takers. The institutions were not ready to present my work. 
So, uh, but I didn't come across a very supportive uh, playwright and a theatre director who passed away, who was a friend to me. In Mumbai itself? Yeah, or, mm -hmm. in Mumbai. Who was he? Satyadev Dube. Uh, so he sort of organized my first performance. Where? In, in which? Prithvi Theatre. Prithvi Theatre. Mm -hmm. Very innovative place. Yeah, so that's how. And then whatever I was creating, which was uh, abstract, but at the same time, one also had to have, because of the mindset of the Indian public who like stories, you know. So, so that's how I gradually began to create my works and show it around India. And then Peter Bausch came, I went. So it was, it took me some time to really develop my own style, which I would say came much later uh, in the 90s, I would say, yeah. So... Uh, is it a style or is it some kind of uh, experiment what you're constantly doing? No, it's not a it no, is, uh, it's not a, mm -hmm. I mean, okay, initially you may say it would be an experiment, but uh, I'm sorry, you can't say that if I've been 45 years that I would be still experimenting, you know. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so, so what no, you was doing it is a making a style, create, yes, creating a style. I was developing style. my uh -huh. style, and and my style. Mm -hmm. If I were to look at my through the decades of my work, um, mm -hmm. you reflect, you mature, your body also matures, and uh, that's how my style has uh, evolved. My work has evolved. Mm -hmm. You know, through the work, my style has come about. And, mm -hmm. and then I slowly started collaborating with other performing arts because dancers were not still ready to work with me. So I started with um, a puppeteer, uh, Dadi Padamji, the master puppeteer. So I created a work with him. Oh, but how, how, puppet, how puppetry helped you? How? Well, puppetry was a part of something which I felt would enhance my choreography. Mm -hmm. Because there were no dancers. So instead of dancers, puppets became the dancers. So the way I choreographed uh, using <coughs> some of the puppeteers who worked with Dadi. So that's how I created a work called Thanatomorphia. Mm -hmm. And then subsequently I then started working in Manipur, uh, first with the Thangta practitioners. And there again I used, they were a group of performers who had a technique of martial art, of movement. So, I, so they had, their bodies were flexible, they had a certain <coughs> technique in which they demonstrated. So, I did, did not have swords and shields and spears in my, in my, but I used their technique and that's how I created a work. And then subsequently, being constantly in Manipur, I came across the drummers of Manipur, the Pongchalam drummers, from the Sri Sri Govindji Naksam Kirtan school. So they've been now with me for 10 years. And then I started also collaborating with musicians, Drupadwat especially. Ah, from uh, traditional music, traditional gharanas? Yeah. You know, uh, so, family like... Uh, yeah, the, the Gundecha brothers were uh, part and uh, now I've been quite discussing work with Bahauddin Daga, the Rudra Veena player. And then I've been working as dancers were not willing to work and at one point of time when I was in Calcutta I offered my workshop to a group of deaf actors and from that three years of 
doing workshops with them, both the theatre director and I felt that the group would be capable of dancing, studying and learning with me and I could create a work. So that's how my journey began with the deaf and it still continues. And there have been various groups who have gone through now since 1988 to now to 2015. Also I've had a, a long stint with the Gallaudet University in Washington DC which is the University for the Deaf. And in between, I've had the opportunity of collaborating with dancers uh, overseas, you know, in Switzerland, in Germany, and also with musicians. So I'm constantly um, pushing my own boundaries. Uh, I've just come back um, doing a theatre production in Korea, having acted in the production of Hamlet Avtar, by, directed by Hyung Tech Lim, where I played the spirit of the father of Hamlet, head of the clowns, co choreographed the production. Mm -hmm. So that's in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, style means uh, grammar. So, what is the grammar of your style? Do you have some kind of footwork? Do you have some kind of karana or something of that kind that you can teach in class regularly? I, or it is I not teach, so like that? I teach, but I'm not... I teach basically the people who I mentor are going to be a part of my creation. So, uh, I, I still haven't codified a series of movements of mine which could become... But yes, what is, is the signature is that my style has become very minimal and it's very controlled and and there's a lot of rasa in what I teach and how I teach. So rasa is the basic things for your for your yeah. uh, job and uh, that is the same rasa as we have in the classical dances yeah. as yeah. well. Yeah, so yeah, the because, same nine. Because, yeah, because mm -hmm. of the fact that as I said my initial training uh, in dance was Kathak and Kathakali also later on and both these Karana styles are very rasa, are an integral part of any Indian classical dance style. So yes, so I do use, uh, even in an abstract movement which I may do, in my thought process of creating or even performing, there is a rasa to it. So even in that abstractness there is a life, it's not just a technique what you see in ballet or what you may see in a, in a contemporary dance creation of different people, you know. So there is rasa which flows even in an abstractness there is because when I'm creating uh, there is the seed of that particular rasa whether it's bhakti or whether it's Rodra, whether it's, you know, other form, other emotions. So, so that's how uh, I've been uh, working and as I said, uh, one hasn't really started codifying or putting it in pen and paper. Uh, how do you feel this exactly now to today's time in India? So once upon a time it was a time to create a classical dance style or neoclassical, whatever. Um, in the 70s, 80s that was a time for contemporary, so explore contemporary, whatever. Now is it 2015. So how do you feel this epoch in India, in the dance field of you? Because there's a lot of market is there, a lot of uh, money uh, invest in one in, uh, invited into dance field from one point of view. From an, another point of view, we have a, what we used to call museums of dance, some kind of frozen stands or whatever who try to keep their inheritance and even claim that it should be done and sometimes it's not welcome. So there are so so many segments in the dance uh, society. So what do you think, what is the most interesting and what is the real things to do today? 
in it. Also for you, but not only for you, but for some creative people in India. Well, as I said earlier, you know, we first of all, you know, a real institution of studying dance techniques of contemporary, which are in the West. Okay, we don't necessarily have to have, but for contemporary dance, uh, I mean, there are some who are coming from an Indian classical dance tradition and then have gone overseas to study for a while in whether it's Laban school or going to your depend and then they come back and then the dancers who are studying, you know, decide for themselves in which direction they want to take their work. You know, so... Uh, uh, but, uh, okay, let's listen. And, mm -hmm. as I said, like, Atakalari, which does a dance diploma course for three years, or there are some other institutions which are saying that they're doing but, uh, okay, well, you know, the Kalari, I know they teach Kalari Pite, which is important, and it's a good uh, thing to study. And, uh, and then I don't know what, but I do recall once that I was speaking to one of the Atakalari senior dancers, and they said, we study six different forms in three years. And I just was very surprised that how, how it's possible. possible. Well, okay, they do it, and others also in, in, the, in the city of Mumbai. So I'm not really, I feel, um, it's just taking advantage of the demand. People are now all of a sudden wanting to dance and wanting to say we're doing contemporary dance. Unlike the Indian classical dancer, even today when they're studying, they put in seven, eight years of riyaz, you know, before they have their arangetra before. And here these people go take classes and for a, three months or one year or two years and then they say, well, now we are contemporary in, 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 in which side you are? Because I know there is huge, you know, um, war, I, quarrel between these people who belong to this Guru Shushya Parampara for 20, 30 years or whatever, and no other styles. And another point of view is the uh, curriculum. So the Western, um, you know, um, approach. Uh, so, and I know that is like a two camps, <laughs> and even they struggle. So what? Do, where are you? In which side you are in, in this case? No. Do you believe in the, in the Guru Shishya Parampara with a strong, uh, you know... Well, uh, see, uh, I, can, I had whatever. the experience of the Guru Shishya Parampara both in Kathak and Kathakali. But here we are talking about contemporary dance. So here what I'm trying to say that the, the dancer who is going to take up must... Today, among the younger ones, when they are creating their works, it's just... Uh, movement of their bodies, you know, and they're superficial, eh? taking, um, you know, a little bit of maybe hip hop or maybe taking, you know, uh, as I said, having gone and studied a little bit uh, in London or US, and they've come and have some movements from a particular style, and they say now, so what, but. It doesn't sometimes blend with their bodies. It, it adds, it looks odd. They say, because I've studied, I must put it. You know, so, and I was very, very careful when I was working at the OK, I studied different techniques uh, for my own uh, knowledge. And then when creating, I was very, very particular that just because you've studied doesn't mean that if you studied ballet, I can't do a proper grand jeté, I can't do an arabesque, then why do a half-baked thing? So my point of uh, argument is that, uh, not argument, but my thing is that today there is not a single institution in the country which takes a dancer to the excellence of physical perfection. 
you know. They bother in me. Yeah. Uh, like if you look at China, if you look, you know, um, or people have studied ballet, and their bodies are extremely flexible. You know, so, and then they can, you know, jump high, they can do acrobatic work, whatever. So that kind of physicality is not there. So, Indian body is different. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, it can be molded. I mean, there are a lot of Indians who have grown and brought up abroad. They study, they have the facility. But here in the country, there is none. Mm. You know, so, and, uh, and I find the people who have studied Indian classical dance and are uh, looking into contemporary creation much more exciting. And is what is happening on the other hand when young people are doing contemporary work. They're doing which could be seen anywhere. There's, uh, I'm not saying you have to do it because when you create honestly, is that's when your honesty comes out. When you try to copy and when you try to imitate, it doesn't come across. Um, so that's my own personal opinion. So, uh, so definitely I am, what I'm trying to say, study whatever style or technique you want. But it has to be for a good couple of years before you can... Uh, but today, as I said, people learn for three months and all of a sudden they know. And then, okay, they are performing, they manage. But I also say, what will be your life's consistency? How long will you be able to dance with your work? Because if you're doing copying and then there are new ones coming, maybe better than you. So that is the situation in the country. But do you have some pakka shishya here? Do you no, have... I don't have a pakka shishya because I, as I said, I mentor, I've mentored groups for six, seven, eight years. In and various I, places, in various places. Yeah. Yeah. In, uh, like in Kolkata, in Mumbai, ah, no, no, not in Mumbai, yeah, in Kolkata. Then, like the martial arts were with me. Uh, that, in Manipur. So I'm, working, I'm working with other performing art disciplines. So it's not really a dance, they're not dancers. I'm making them, I'm introducing them to dance, I'm introducing them to my style of movement, but at the same time taking what they have to offer into my choreography. You know, so it's my creation. Uh -huh. So uh, So it's not actually the uh, lessons, it's not actually class. It's a just a project. Yeah, it's, it's a just a uh, it, work on the... I mean, the classes do happen because mm -hmm. in order to do what I'm doing, you have to take intensive workshops uh, of mine which I do for them, and that's how I gradually... Uh, Basically in Kolkata, in um, Well, it Manipur. used to be not any... Kolkata's finished now. Ah, Manipur still is Manipur there. Still is there. Uh, I used... I mentored a group of street children of Delhi for eight years, and created performances and traveled with them. Street, and, street children? Yeah. They're not children, they're young teenagers. They belong to an NGO called Salam Balak Trust. So basically... So, um, do you believe in uh, dance in India? Do I believe in, dance in, in India? In future, in the future of yeah, dance. We have our strong Indian... What makes you happy about Indian dance today? That the, the art tradition is still carried on. Uh, the also Indian classical dance is evolving, it's changing in its presentation also. Like if, if you saw a Bharatanatyam dance performance, they would begin with Alaripu and then they would, you know, come to uh, Jatiswaram. And then they would end it with a Tilana. But now we don't really see Alaripu being done. Similarly in ODC dance also. So now, gurus, young gurus are also changing the format. But still the styles are there. What is also becoming 
There's a lot of group work happening now. Because initially it was Indian dance, excepting for Katakali and Puriyatam. Primarily it was all solo performances. Mm -hmm. You know, if we looked at Bharatnatyam, we looked at Kathak, you know, we looked at Odissi. It's later on that the various gurus started making group choreography. But these traditions, yeah, these traditions are going on. But what about the social issue that you mentioned by you? Because I know that some people, they don't like uh, to have a social content in Indian dance. Because they say the Indian dance is about the Almighty. It's about something that is supernatural. So again, what, is your, what is your vision? What is your feeling? No, that's it. Dance is evolving, and again, like there are some dancers, like Malavika Sarukai, has been taking up, uh, you know, some environment issues in her Bharatanatyam. So there are certain thinking dancers who bring in different kinds of themes, working on poets and poems. And, you know, so you again, do, you do, you personally do. I have done, but even other Indian classical dancers also. Do base their work on, you know, not necessarily just the Keith Govinda or of Krishna. So it's changing, you know. But it's contemporary dance again, as I said, now with these Atakalari festival is on, Delhi has started the Ignite festival with just a ten. You know, so there is, and as I said, there are a lot of young people who are so let's see if um, an initiative is there. Um, I've seen some works just now. I came back yesterday from a, uh, from the Ignite Festival. So I saw a little bit of certain works. What impressed you much, most of all? Which which presentation did you? Well, I, well basically, I, I didn't. I went basically because I was starting a new work with a Swedish choreographer who was dancing there. So I primarily had gone to see her. I saw some uh, young dancers who I know who are now on the scene and are working. So there is a very charged energy right now in that area. Uh, so let's see. What uh, still so far, nothing dynamic has come out. You know, there are certain future sparks in people that I see, but at this point, uh, it still has to develop. So let's see.